This will be the third and last lecture over chapter 16. So in this lecture, we'll look at how do you name aromatic molecules. So some of these you just have to memorize. Um, so you see, this is benzene. So if you have something on benzene, this would just be called chloro benzene, or this would be called propyl benzene. Uh, so if you see NO2, so this is what the NO2 Lewis structure looks, looks like. NO2 is called nitro. So this would be called nitro benzene. So those are not the ones that you have to memorize. These are the ones that you have to memorize. So if you have a CH3 group on benzene, so yes, that is methylbenzene, but nobody calls it methylbenzene. That molecule is called toluene. <clears throat> If you have this alkene on benzene, that molecule is called styrene. This one's we looked at before. If you have an OH on benzene, that is called phenol. If you have an NH2 on benzene, that is called aniline. <clears throat> the OCH3 ether on benzene, that is called anisole. Uh, this ketone on benzene, so C double bond O, CH3, it has to be that. That's called acetophenone. If you have this carboxylic acid on benzene, right, that's called benzoic acid. This aldehyde on benzene, that's called benzaldehyde. And this is called Benzo it's called benzophenone. So two benzene rings with a C double bond O in between it is benzophenone. Okay, so what if you have two things on benzene? Then how do you name these? So first of all, we have to recognize, so again, you have to memorize these. Uh, these, what are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, of these or these will be the parent that you have to have memorized so in this case phenol is the parent so this would be called 2 chloro phenol so since the OH is part of the parent so that carbon is number one so this would be carbon number two so you sometimes also see this called ortho Orthochlorophenol, so the ortho means the two things are one, two with respect to each other. Or just abbreviated O. So O chlorophenol would be, so you should know how to name all three, all three different ways. Or in this case, then that would be your parent, so that's aniline. So that means that's carbon number one, and that's two, that's three. So this would be 3 bromo aniline, or if two things are 1, 3 with respect to each other, then that's also called meta. So you could call this meta bromo aniline, or simply M. So meta means the two things are 1, 3 with respect to each other. Okay, and in this case, so that would be the parent, so that's benzaldehyde, so that's carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, so this would be 4 nitro benzaldehyde, or if they're 1, 4 with respect to each other, then that's called para. So you could call it para or simply P. Okay, so if you, if you name these two molecules, so how would you name those two molecules? Okay, so the first one's a little tricky, so is it going to be toluene? Or is it going to be benzoic acid? 
Well, so which has priority, the carboxylic acid or the methyl? Carboxylic acid is going to have priority, right? So again, the more oxygens in the functional group, the higher the priority. So this is going to be named as a derivative of benzoic acid. So then you could call this meta methyl. or 3-methyl. Uh, right, so either metamethyl benzoic acid or 3-methyl benzoic acid or M-methyl uh, benzoic acid. Okay. So in this case, then that's acetophenone. So this would be 2-bromo. Uh, acetophenone or orthobromo acetophenone or obromo acetophenone. <clears throat> okay, so if there are more than two groups on benzene, then you use numbers. You never use ortho, meta, or para. So three things on benzene. Um, okay, so we have to decide where to start numbering from. One, two, three, four. Is it one, two, three, four like that? Or is it um, one, two, three, four? Well, you want to keep the numbering scheme as low as possible, so we're going to go with blue, right? So this would be 4-chloro, um, 2-ethyl, and 1-methyl benzene. <clears throat> okay, but in this case, the nath is one of these trivial names that you have to have memorized, anisole. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you would have three, five, difluoral, anisole. And in this last one, then that's toiling. So that would be carbon number one, and two, three, four, five, six. So you would have two, four, six, tri nitro toiling, which may be a molecule you've heard of before. Um, that's also called TNT, right, which is an explosive. Okay, so what do you do uh, if benzene does not have priority? So if it does not have priority, then you call it phenyl. All right, so in a molecule like this, so you have an alcohol and you have benzene, which one has priority? The alcohol does. So this is carbon one, two, three. So you would then call this one phenyl. And then propan one all, right? Since it's an alcohol, the E changes to OL. Put the one right before it, since that's where the OH is at. And benzene doesn't have priority, call it phenyl, right? Not, not phenol, because that's a totally different molecule, right? It's YL. Okay, so this one's a little trickier. Well, so then you have to recognize that's phenol. So now the other thing is a substituent. So this would be ortho, if you recognize what is the substituent. That's four carbon chain. That's a sec butyl, if you remember what sec butyl is. So that would be ortho sec butyl phenol. And this one, that would be aniline. So I kind of did the rest of these. So if you could see if you could remember what sec butyl, isobutyl, tert butyl, isopropyl, and so forth are. So this would be an, a tert-butyl, right? So this would be m tert butyl aniline, or 3 tert butyl aniline, or meta tert butyl aniline. In this case, that would be styrene. So if you remember what that would be called, that's an isopropyl. So that would be meta isopropyl styrene. <clears throat> And this last one, um, 
So that would be benzaldehyde, and if you remember what that is called, that is the isobutyl group. So that would be para isobutyl benzaldehyde, or four isobutyl benzaldehyde, or p isobutyl benzaldehyde. Okay, a few more to go. So just to throw in some other concepts and to remind you some concepts from organic chemistry one. So this next molecule is pretty complex. So I threw this in to see if you can remember how to handle chiral carbons. You have to do R or S, right? And then if you have double bonds and you have to worry about E and Z. And so what's the highest priority functional group? It's gonna be the alcohol. So we're gonna number the parent chain to keep that as low as possible. So this is one. That's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, and that's six. So this would be a hexane parent. You're gonna change that to OL to take care of the OH. To take care of the double bond, you're gonna change that to E. Okay, so this is a hex dash four N dash two O. And then you have five chloro. And then you have four phenyl. And now the stereochemistry. So RNS, so that's priority one. And that's two and that's three. One to two to three is clockwise. That would be R. Four is in the solid wedge, so you have to reverse it. So it's S. So it's two S. And then for the double bond, we split this in half. That's priority one, and that's two. And this is going to be one, and that's two. Ones are opposite, so that's trans or E. So that would be 2S4E5-chloro4-phenyl-hex4N2-all. Pretty complicated, right? <clears throat> but if you know the basic rules, it's easy. Okay, I threw this one in so that uh, two functional groups, carboxylic acid and alcohol, Carboxylic acid has priority because it's got more oxygens. So what do you do with OH if it doesn't have priority? If OH is a substituent, then you call it hydroxy. So this would be M hydroxy benzoic acid. <clears throat> okay, so I threw this one in. So that would be the highest priority functional group, the carboxylic acid. So I threw this in to see if you remember what to do with ethers when they don't have priority. So that would be a one, two carbon chain ether. So that would be ethoxy. So here you have uh, P or para or four P ethoxy benzoic. benzoic acid. Okay, so let's do two more, two more naming. Okay, so uh, ether, if you remember how to name ethers, so name that and then name that. So this would be cyclohexyl. And then this would be phenyl. Cyclohexyl phenyl ether, right? And then one more just to illustrate a point that students sometimes mistake that they make. So maybe they want to call this um, orthochloro, uh, but you only use ortho meta para for benzene, nothing else. That's not a benzene, that's a cyclohexane. So you would simply call this 2 chloro cyclohexanol, not ortho. Right, not ortho, not O. Right, you only use ortho meta para for benzene, nothing else. And then you only use it if there's only two things on benzene. Okay, so lastly, I just wanted to remind you of spectroscopy. Since we're doing some spectroscopy this semester, to, we talked about it lecture in organic one, but to remind you of spectroscopy in organic two. So if you have benzene or aromatic, so now you know lots of different aromatic molecules. So hydrogens on aromatic rings typically fall between seven and eight ppm and proton NMR. 
So if you integrated the signal for that, so let's say you get four. Well, benzene has six hydrogens, right? So if it integrates to five, then that means your benzene is mono-substituted. If it integrates to four, like it did here, then that means your benzene is disubstituted, so it's either ortho, meta, or para. If you integrated that signal and you got three, then that means your benzene is trisubstituted, right? So that gives you structural information if you're trying to figure out what your molecule is. Whatever the integration is, you know, six is what benzene has, subtract that, that's how many groups are attached to benzene. So if it's ortho, then your spectra would look like this, right? If X and Y was on benzene and they're, they're different, then this would be a doublet and that would be a doublet. Uh, but there's a plane of symmetry here, so these two hydrogens are the same, and these two hydrogens are the same, but they would both be a doublet. So you're, so it's usually, sorry, that's para. So it's pretty easy to pick out if a benzene ring is para substituted because you get two doublets. Um, man, what did I do here? That's ortho. This is a meta. So if it's meta substituted. If it's ortho substituted, then now if X and Y are different, then all four of these hydrogens are different, and this would be a doublet, that would be a triplet, that would be a triplet, that would be a doublet, right? Sometimes they're not all resolved, sometimes they're on top of each other, so the spectra gets pretty complex. But if they were all resolved, then you would see two doublets and two triplets. And they would integrate to one to one to one to one ratio. These would integrate to a two to two ratio. And if it's meta substituted, then this would be singlet, right? And this would be doublet, and this would be doublet, and this would be triplet because of the n plus one rule. So if they were all resolved, and if it's meta substituted, you would expect to see a singlet, two doublets, and a triplet. So that can help you figure out the structure of a molecule. Carbon 13 for if it's aromatic. So those signals for the carbons and aromatic rings are typically between 120 and 160 ppm. IR, if you have a benzene ring, uh, then this region 1600 to 1500, you typically have four peaks in there. Plus, for the CHs, all of these carbons are sp2 hybridized, and so the CH stretches on an sp2 hybridized carbon are about 30, 30 to 30, 50 inverse centimeters. And then in UV spectroscopy, then if you have an aromatic ring, you know, depending on what the aromatic ring is, whether it's benzene or naphthalene or whatever, obviously the more conjugation you have, right, the peak shifts to longer wave numbers or to longer wavelength. So benzene, anywhere from 190 to 250 depending on what's benzene and then as you get more conjugation in benzene and they'll shift to longer uh, wavelengths and so if you remember from chapter 15 lecture what's going on is you're exciting an electron from a pi to a pi star orbital and you see a peak uh, when that happens okay we'll stop there mm -hmm.